72 was a very busy year for me. Uh, it was a year when we had the visit to China. It was a year when we had the visit to Moscow. And then in December, of course, perhaps the most difficult decision I made of the December bombing, which did lead to the uneasy peace, but it is peace with all the Americans home, all of our POWs home. Now, during that period of time, frankly, I didn't manage the campaign. I didn't run the campaign. People around me didn't bring things to me that they probably should have because I was frankly just too busy trying to do the nation's business to run the politics. If mistakes are made, however, I'm not blaming the people down below. The man at the top's got to take the heat for all of them. Nixon had very loyal men around him, folks who were willing to walk over broken glass. Uh, and he exploits that. Nixon exploits that. And he gets them to do his bidding. Nixon had a tendency to surround himself with these young, Southern California ad agency types. The White House staff, as it evolves, I think you'll find will be smaller than it's been in the past. I know you'll find it'll be probably the youngest one in history, certainly one of the youngest. Richard Nixon managed to charm them. And that charm was so strong that he pulled them over the line. He encouraged them to do things that maybe they wouldn't have otherwise done. And they seemed to be involved in one giant contest to prove to the boss who could be tougher, who could be more ruthless. Their critics call them the Germans and describe their office as the Berlin Wall. I'm speaking of President Nixon's chief White House advisors, John Ehrlichman, and HR for Harry Robbins Haldeman. Haldeman and Ehrlichman were, were like brothers to Nixon at times. I mean, they served in every possible personal and professional role for him. Haldeman and Ehrlichman understood the importance of protecting the president. I knew Haldeman to say hello to, although he was a much feared figure. And I remember my father used to call him the jolly steel buzzsaw. You want to understand Bob Haldeman? Look at his haircut. Bob Haldeman was the chief of staff of the White House. And people said, whatever Haldeman knows, the president knows. In February of 1972, the election year, there was one reputable poll that said that uh, one of his opponents within one point of beating him in an election. And clearly, Mr. Nixon said, I'm going to make certain that my enemies don't get me. The Nixon campaign's political propaganda arm publicly portrays two arch villains to the re-elect Nixon effort. The national media, which will slant stories unfavorable to the administration, and Democratic frontrunner George McGovern. Operation Gemstone was a plan of dirty tricks and of political tactics leading up to the election year of 1972. Nixon would call it rock'em sock'em politics or hardball. It wasn't just tough politics. It was criminal behavior. I said, well, if you're talking about an all-out, full offensive and defensive capability political intelligence uh, operation, you're talking about one hell of a lot of money. G. Gordon Liddy put together this, this madcap collection of crimes. Each different kind of operation was given the name of a precious jewel. We had so many operations, we quickly ran out of precious jewels. We went into semi-precious jewels, and by the time we were finished, we were down to coal and brick. Liddy, I say, was a cowboy. Liddy was a hotshot. Liddy, Liddy was the guy who would do it and could do it. When you hire a G. Gordon Liddy, you're hiring a guy that's going to do what he's told to do, and there's not a lot of boundaries. We later learned that Howard Hunt and Gordon Liddy plotted to try to kill Jack Anderson, the columnist. Gordon Liddy brushed by me and he said, Jeb just told me to take care of Jack Anderson. I said, I am to kill Jack Anderson. I am on my way to kill Jack Anderson. He said, oh my God, he took off like a deer running down the hall. I then went into Magruder's office and I said, Jeb, uh, did you just tell him to rub out Jack Anderson? I said, uh, to Gordon, I was just uh, talking off the cuff. I wasn't serious. And Liddy looked at me with that stern, you know, sort of macho look and he said, Never give me an order for a hit job that you don't mean, because I'll do it. The irony is that he had been an FBI officer. And yet, he comes out of the FBI environment, and he is ready to break laws at the request of the executive. Gordon Liddy goes to the Department of Justice, 
the highest law enforcement officer in the land. He's in the Attorney General's very formal office, and Gordon Liddy presents Operation Gemstone, under which they will not only break into the DNC offices in the Watergate complex, but they will hire a houseboat to place outside of the Fountain Blue Hotel in Miami during the Democratic Convention. They will put prostitutes on this houseboat with cameras so they will lure Democratic delegates onto the houseboat and blackmail them. John Mitchell, who was transitioning from the Department of Justice to the head of the Committee to Reelect the President, was the man who was going to okay or not this collection of crimes. They asked for a million dollars and John Mitchell didn't say, are you guys crazy? Get out of here, that's all illegal, that's crazy. No, he said, it's too expensive. Please come back with a lower budget. There was pressure from the White House, from me and from the president to the committee to get their campaign intelligence activity going. To me, it was a throwaway project. You know, give Liddy the quarter million dollars and let's get him off our back and, and satisfy the White House. And Mitchell finally said, okay, let's, let's go with it. I remember at the beginning, there was a sense of the mastermind of all of this is Gordon Liddy. Well, history now has established that the mastermind was Richard Nixon. And so when we come to the Watergate story, it was perfectly in character, even though he looked like he was set up for a pretty comfortable re-election campaign, it was perfectly in character for him to say, well, I want every advantage. I will approve this, I will approve that, because he thought if he played it straight, he might lose. And so he played it a little crooked. I was called in by Jeb Stuart Magruder to his office, and he said, can you get into the Watergate office building? Over the weekend, five men were nabbed in the Democratic National Headquarters here in Washington, seemingly preparing to tap or bug the place. 